Hello, my name is Mike Geig, and in this video we are going to look at retrieving items from a list box control in my series on Windows programming with C Sharp. In the last video we talked about the list box control, and I, I, I kind of slightly cover on retrieving items from the list box control, but in this video I want to elaborate and show you several different methods of retrieving items from a list box control. So I'm going to go ahead and add a list box control to my program. And we'll call it uh, my list, right like that. All right, um, and I'll just give it some starter values. All right, so we'll say Mike, Tom, John. All right, and I will add a button. Great. So the very first way. Um, I'm going to make that say display. The very first way we can access items from a list box is by treating it like an array. All right, uh, so I just double clicked on my button display to get the, to an event handler, the, to the code behind. Uh, and I'm simply going to say message box dot show. Uh, and I'm going to say my list dot items. All right, and we can use items like an array. So I can use the square brackets in specified index. So if it said uh, position zero, index zero, uh, we will see that in the message box. Um, oops, and I want to do two string. There we go. And I will hit play and I will hit display and I see Mike because Mike is the zeroth item in my list box let's say I specified two and I run it and we should see John and we do okay so that's the very first way is using it like an array all right uh, it's fairly simple uh, if you have experience using arrays already then you know you're you're already there right uh, it's a fairly simple way of finding items inside uh, a, a list box control now let's say that we don't know the index of something let's say we want to find the index of something let's say I know the value I just don't know where it is in the list box control I'm trying to programmatically find it I can do that with the find uh, method of the list box so what I want to do is I am going to create an, an index value. Int index is going to equal my list dot find. All right, and I have uh, uh, I can find the form that the control is on. I can find the string and I can find the string exact. Okay, uh, I'm just going to do find string uh, since I know what the string value is that I'm looking for. I will use that and I'm going to specify that I am looking for. Let's say Tom. I am looking for Tom. Okay. All right. And we will see if this is correct by doing a message box that show index dot two string. We will see if Tom was successfully found by running this. We should see a one when I click this button. And we do see a one. Tom was found at index one and that's returned to us. All right. Uh, I could also do a message box dot show my list dot items. Uh, sub index and oops sub index dot two string and now we'll just see we'll we'll want Tom where Tom's gonna pop up uh, as we can see here because Tom became one one was searched for as Tom and we output Tom there okay so we can use this find uh, in this case find string all right to find uh, what we want if we don't know the index okay the other thing I want to talk about is the selected index or selected item, which we've seen before. All right, uh, selected item is is pretty useful here. Let me go ahead and get rid of some of this stuff here. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to output what it is the user has selected. So I'm going to do my list dot selected items, and if I if I look here, well, selected I can I can manually cause something to be selected, but I see that I have selected index. Selected indices, which indicates that I can select more than one index. Selected item, selected items, again indicating I can select more than one. Selected value, which is the value of whatever's in there, and um, yeah, and that's it. And of course, we have our event handlers. In this case, I'm going to do uh, well. First, I'll do selected index. All right, we'll that do dot two string, and I'll run it. And if I pick Mike, I see zero. And if I pick John, I see two. Awesome. I could also do selected item and run it again. And if I pick Mike, I see Mike. 
And if I pick Tom, I see Tom. All right. So that's all fairly easy. This is the one we looked at last time. Let's look at one more way of doing this. Let's say uh, I want my user to be able to output several uh, uh, or, or select several items from this list box. All right. What I want to do is I am simply going to say uh, string output string equals that. And then I'm going to do a for each loop. For each loop allows me to iterate through a collection. Now, right now, my list is a collection, but my list is a collection that contains a collection of selected items, a little sub collection. And that's what I can go through. So I can say for each, and I can say uh, string name in my list dot selected items. All right. And I can say, uh, in this case, I'll say string, or I'm not string, I'm sorry, output string plus equals name plus space. All right. And then I'll finish it off by saying message box dot show output string. There we go. All right. Now let's go ahead and give this a whirl. So I'll run it. And I'll select one item and hit display. And I see Mike. Now, if I hold down, uh, oh, okay, what I forgot to do, I forgot to mention this. I'm going to come back over here to form1.cs, our design. I'm going to click on the list box control. And I forgot to tell it that I can select more than one. By default, you can only select one. So if we look down here at selection mode, you'll see that it's currently set to one. I'm going to go ahead and set that to multi simple. All right, that's going to allow me to select more than one item. And I'll run this again. And now we'll see if I click Mike, I've got Mike. And if we click Mike and hold down Shift, we can also get Tom. Now I'll see Mike and Tom. And Shift again, we'll get John, Mike, Tom, John. Control click Tom, disables him. Uh, then Mike, John, and so on and so forth. Uh, control clicking allows you to change single items like that. Okay. So now we can see how a for each loop can go iterate through the items of this collection uh, and allow us to select multiple uh, items and, and do things with that data. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this video on retrieving items from a list box. Uh, in this video, I talked about using a list box as an array. I talked about the find method. Uh, I talked about using the selected item and the selected index. And I talked about the selected items and indexes or indices collection and how to use them in a for loop or for each loop.